Yesterday on this program, a number of people called in and said, uh, you got to watch this show about the Roosevelts that Ken Burns put together. Uh, Ken Burns, uh, it's over on PBS, and uh, you, can, you, know, you can also buy the DVD and watch it and all that kind of stuff. So last night, uh, I watched part of, you know, it's like, you know, the first segment, there's like, what, seven of them, I think, and, and the first one runs almost two hours, and so I didn't, I didn't get through the whole thing. I, I, I got partway into it and then was falling asleep, so I went to bed. But, um, but the thing that shocked me was that this supposedly nonpartisan thing starts out with George Will. And, you know, as partisan or as a Republican as you can get, trashing, basically, the Roosevelts for not respecting the Constitution. And, in fact, that's preceded George Will's little riff. And this is, you know, this is the whole, this is the essence of the entire Republican Koch brothers argument. Is that if the Constitution doesn't say that the government may help pay for public schools, then the government can't. It's not an enumerated power that if the Constitution doesn't say that the that that the government may provide Social Security to people and be a, you know, provide, uh, as it were, poverty insurance for old age, then you can't do it because it's not an enumerated power. If the Constitution doesn't say that the government can provide Medicare and Medicaid, you can't do it. It's not an enumerated power. And on and on and on, you know, the, the Constitution doesn't say that the. Well, actually, I was going to say the interstate highway system. One of the enumerated powers in the list in Article 1, Section 8 is the power to build roads for the post office, postal roads. Um, So I suppose you could stretch that. And the fact of the matter is that uh, various of the founders at various times used this enumerated powers argument to uh, go against the things they didn't like, and they conveniently ignored it when we were talking about things that they did like. For example, Thomas Jefferson, Uh, he used the enumerated powers argument against the federal government supporting a private bank, the first bank of the United States, uh, which was a bank while he was president. He didn't try to take it down while he was president. But before he was president, in 1791, when Congress was debating it or when it was being debated uh, the uh, during the George Washington administration, he wrote a long piece saying, you know, Congress doesn't provide us with the authority to take federal money, tax dollars, and create a private for-profit corporation for the purposes of stabilizing our banking. This is something that should be done by the Treasury Department. Now, I frankly agree with him on that, at least in principle. I think that, you know, the the, the Fed should be taken under the Treasury Department. And this is an argument that Jefferson was making in uh, 1791. He also made it in 1817. But broadly speaking, you know, one of the enumerated powers... In the, in the Constitution, and I'll, I'll read it to you. One of, you know, the, among the, the powers given to, the, to Congress, right? Uh, Article 1, Section 8. The, the Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duty, imposed ex, and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. So basically, and, and Jefferson makes this argument that if you can claim that this is actually for the general welfare of the United States, if you can prove that, then you've got a case. And that's the provision under which people like FDR said Social Security is, is legal. Medicare is legal, uh, LBJ said. Medicaid is legal, uh, LBJ said. Um, is constitutional. But anyhow, this is how the Roosevelts start with this essential rewriting of early American history and expounding the Antonin Scalia, David and Charles Koch view of the Constitution which shocked me. I mean, I'm sitting here watching this thinking I'm going to see a, 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 a piece of history and the framing device. This is literally the first sentence, the first on-air interview, the first sentences of the Roosevelt's this PBS documentary by Ken Burns. Here it is. Jefferson's view of government was that government can only do that which is explicitly enumerated in the Constitution of the United States. Theodore Roosevelt coming one century later, precisely one century later, says, no, government can do anything that is not specifically prohibited in the Constitution. And he believed that the government of the United States had to be much more central, energetic, and assertive than the Constitution had envisioned it, 
or we could not go on as a nation. I think both presidents this is George regarded Will. the Constitution as a nuisance. That is something that was all right in the late 18th century, but just what didn't fit a their country, and more important, them. They had bigger dreams, and they thought that uh, the Constitution was elastic enough to accommodate their ambitions. Right. So we're going to open the piece about the Roosevelts by trashing the Roosevelts by saying that both Teddy and Franklin did not respect the Constitution, did not view it the same way the founders did, and basically used an illegal, or at least an unconstitutional, uh, perspective on things to move forward with what Teddy Roosevelt called the Square Deal and what Franklin Roosevelt called the New Deal. I was, sh I was shocked. I mean, I'm looking at this thing going, really, this is your frame? PBS? Your basic frame is that the Roosevelts, oh, yeah, they might have done some great stuff, but it was all illegal. They were stretching and twisting and distorting the Constitution. And so maybe we should just, like, undo it all. I mean, this, this is the, the Koch brothers' agenda. This is the, the Tea Party agenda. This is the Libertarian agenda. This is now increasingly the Republican Party's agenda, is undo every piece of both the New Deal and the Square Deal. Teddy Roosevelt fought for inheritance taxes. They want to undo that. Teddy Ro Roosevelt fought for a, minimum, min a maximum number of hours in the workplace. It was 50 hours when he was president. The, the conservatives want to undo that. Teddy Roosevelt fought for a minimum wage. He didn't get it. Franklin Roosevelt got it. Conservatives want to undo that. Teddy Roosevelt fought against the, fought for child labor laws. He didn't get them. Franklin got them. The Supreme Court struck them down, and then the Supreme Court reversed itself. So what's constitutional, right? But George Will, the, this partisan Republican hack, opening this this uh, this history piece saying well you know the, the roosevelts thought the constitution was so elastic they just kind of ignored the damn thing you know so. really so to those of you who thought it was a, a wonderful documentary and learned a lot from it and i'm sure that the rest of it is i i still have a lot of respect for ken burns as a documentary maker i just don't know how he let that slip through how do you start a documentary about basically a, a you know a, a political family that had tremendous impact on the United States, and it wasn't. I mean the 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 Franklin Roosevelt branch of the family and the Teddy Roosevelt fr branch of the family basically didn't communicate with each other. They were very separate. You know they didn't. These guys didn't know each other. For example, how do you, it, it, so? It's not like the Kennedys or the Bushes where you've got you know you can identify Joe Kennedy. Or, or George, George Herbert Walker Bush as kind of the patriarch, and then they push their progeny along, or John Adams and John Quincy Adams. But, you know, it's a nice little frame to stick it all into. Two, you know, two branches of the same family who don't believe in the Constitution. Now let's see what they did. I was just astonished. Just astonished. So, anyway. End of rant. Uh, we will, uh, yeah. Now, as I said, you can find Thomas Jefferson talking about enumerated powers, specifically with regard to the, to the, to a private bank being the bank for the United States. And, and frankly, I, I think he may have a, he made a, made a very, very good case. We'll be back at 15 minutes past that. This is the Tom Hartman program. But that doesn't mean that he opposed any government action for the general welfare, which is the rest of what Teddy and Franklin were doing.